Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's learn one of the more basic tasks related to machine learning, let's teach the machine how to drive a car. This is a classic example, and it's pretty easy to do when working with Unity ML agents. I covered a complete getting started guide in another video, so go watch that if you're not familiar with the toolkit. Machine learning in Unity is actually very simple and easy to use once you understand the basics. There's a link in the description for the entire machine learning playlist. Now here we want to teach the AI to drive a car. For that we first need a car controller, so here I have a very simple one. I can move it with the arrow keys and works pretty much exactly like you would expect, just a very basic car controller. Now how this is implemented isn't important for training the AI. All that matters is that we have some way that we can interact with this controller by setting forward and turning amounts. In this case I have this simple function, set the input where I can set the forward amount and turn amount. So the AI won't work on any car controller you want to use, doesn't have to be this specific one, all it needs is to expose a function where the AI can take these actions. In order to get our final AI, we're first going to teach to drive it in a simple track, just doing some left turns. Then we're going to teach it on a track where it does some right turns. And then finally we're going to train it on a much more complex track. But before we look at the training, let's first think of the big picture of what it is that we need for the AI to drive a car. So I've got a car here, and the goal is for the car to go all the way around the track, so think about what information does the AI need in order to achieve this goal. Well, first it needs to know where the track is, so we can tell it that by essentially placing some invisible walls on each side of the track and firing some raycasts. So just place a bunch of walls all alongside the track, and this way the AI will be able to tell where there's a wall and where there isn't. So it will learn what's around it, so it can learn to stay away from the walls. And then we also need to tell the AI that it's actually making progress. So for that, there's some invisible checkpoints placed around the track. So I can make them a bit visible, and yep, there they go, all of the checkpoints. So every time the AI goes through one checkpoint, it receives a reward. As usual, when it comes to machine learning, the tricky part isn't really on the code. That part is very easy, as you saw in the Getting Started video. The tricky part is making a good training environment. So this is why before you start writing any code, you should stop and think about what does the AI need to know, just like we did right now. So over here I have a brain that I trained previously. As you can see, it follows correctly alongside the track and goes through all of the checkpoints and goes all the way around it. So it works on this one with just left turns. It also works on this one with right turns, there you go, they all keep going at it. And it also works on this much more complex track. So there you go, they start in there, they go through, they manage to go through that turn, through that turn. Then over here, this complex one, yep, there you go, they succeed and they keep going all the way. The AI isn't completely perfect, there are still some times where they hit the invisible walls, but the model is working, so the solution to fix all that is simply much more training. So that's the setup that I've got. I have a simple nice car model that I grabbed from a racing asset pack, there's a link if you want to grab it. On the car object, I have a simple collider, a rigid body and a car driver script. So these are the components for the car controller to work. Like I said, you can use any car controller you want, so don't worry about these specific components. So those handle the car, and then over here I have all of the machine learning components. So in here is the car driver agent, the behavior parameters, and the decision requester. So these are the standard machine learning components, I cover them in detail in the getting started video. The one big difference here is over here on the decision requester, I'm requesting a decision on every step, rather than default which would be on every 5 steps. I'm requesting it on every single one because the car drives pretty fast, so it does need to make a decision quite often. Now the one new thing here is this component, the ray perception sensor. So this is the default ML agents component. What it does is it automatically handles firing some raycasts and handing them to the observations. It also has a nice editor script so we can see it over here in the editor in action. So if I move the car, yep there you go, you can see it happening, you can see as it collides. So this is the information that the AI will receive. For the parameters here, you can play around with how many rays per direction. So there you go, right here we have three, so one, two, three, and one down the center. So you can increase as many as you want. Then you've got the max ray degree, so right now the maximum is just 70 degrees in there. But if you want, you could make it go 360. Then the sphere cast radius, so that's the size of the sphere. So this isn't actually a ray cast, but rather a sphere cast. So this is helpful if the object you're trying to detect with ray cast is quite tiny. So just increase the size of the sphere cast, like that. Then you can also define a length, so this is how far the raycast will go. So naturally it needs to be big enough in order to actually detect the object in front of it. Then we also have a start and end vertical offsets. So here for example the object, the origin is right down there, but I don't want it to start firing right from the floor. So instead I put it on a vertical offset of 1, so it starts 1 unit above. Then you can also have the end vertical offset, so for example you could put this one to go down, and there you go, all of the raycasts go down. 
So for example, if you want to teach the machine to avoid falling off the map, you would simply add this, make it start higher and end lower. Okay, so those are the basics. Then you have the layer mask. So this is what layers the rays will collide against. And once again, you need to think like a machine like we did a while ago. So in order for the AI to learn how to drive, it needs to know about the walls as well as the checkpoints. So that's exactly what I said here. By using this layer mask, the rays will only collide with these layers. So for example, I've got a car here, and as you can see, this second car is right in front. There you go. The ray goes through it, but it doesn't collide with that one since that one is not on the walls or checkpoints layer. Then we also have the detectable tags. So this is how the AI knows what object it hits. So they are based on the game object tags right in here. So as you can see on the wall, they've got the wall tag as well as the wall layer and the checkpoint, the same thing, same thing. So with this sensor, the AI now knows if it hits something at what distance that object is and what type of object it is. So with this, the AI has knowledge that there's a wall over here onto this side at this distance and knows that it's a wall. And right in front, it knows that there's a checkpoint at this distance. I mean, again, the AI really only works with numbers, so it doesn't really understand what is a checkpoint and what is a wall. But over time, it will learn to increase the distance from this object type and decrease distance towards this object type. So as you can see, the setup is very simple. The only new thing compared to what I covered in the Getting Started video is really just a sensor. Now let's look at the agent code. And by the way, if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing and hitting the like button. It really helps out the channel. Here it is. It's a pretty simple script. As you can see, it's less than 100 lines long. The tricky part is really only on the training setup and not on the code itself. So here on start, I'm just listening to the track checkpoints. So this is the script that handles when the car goes through a checkpoint. I cover this checkpoint system in detail in another video. Then over here, it's very simple. If it goes through the correct checkpoint, gets a positive reward, and through the wrong checkpoint, gets a negative reward. Then down here on our episode begin, we just place the car on start with a bit of randomness. We make it point the same forward as the spawn position. We reset the checkpoints and we stop the car driver. Then over here for the observations, as we saw, we use the sensor and that one automatically handles most of them. Over here, I just added an extra one for the dot product between the transform forward and the checkpoint forward. So with this, the AI should learn to face the same direction as the checkpoint. And then we have the actions, and for actions, we really just have two of them. So just forward and turn. And that one is handled by discrete actions. So we've got accelerate, brake slash reverse, and don't move. And also turn right, turn left, and don't turn. Then after coming up with the turn amount for amount, I just send that over to the car driver. Again, it doesn't matter what car controller I'm using here, it can be anything as long as I can make it work with these two types of inputs. Then for the heuristics, very basic, just using the arrow keys. And then down here, we've got the collisions. Here on the on collision enter, so when a collision first happens, when it first hits a wall, I'm giving it a rather large negative reward. And then on the collision say, which is triggered for every physics update that the collision is happening, for that one, I give it a small reward. So with this, I'm trying to encourage the AI to keep off the walls because before I added this, the AI was essentially just sliding along the wall. And that's it, there's nothing else. So as you can see, it's a very simple script. The code is all very basic. The training setup is really the only tricky part. So I just placed all the tracks, placed all the checkpoints alongside it, as well as all the walls. And again, the only thing that matters is really just the physics system. So here I can easily make the walls invisible and everything still works perfectly. Then for the checkpoints themselves, I'm using the checkpoint system that I covered in detail in another video. It handles the logic for ensuring that each car is passing through the correct checkpoint. Now here it is important not to place them too far apart, so they should be relatively evenly spaced and have a bunch more on the turns. You have to remember that the AI really only knows it did something good when it gets a reward. So adding more rewards on complex turns does make it help learn. So for example, here I have quite a lot of checkpoints in order to make sure that it learns how to do this really complex turn. Okay, now we can try training it just like this. So here it is, just using reinforcement learning and it's trying to learn. Right away you see that they actually start going backwards instead of forwards. The reason is because I made the braking speed whilst moving forwards pretty fast, so if he tries a bunch of random actions then he just ends up going backwards. Now the one big change that I made since my first attempt at this project was with regards to the walls. First, I made the AI lose instantly when they touch the walls. That makes logical sense, but it also made it so that every episode was very short, so it was hard for the AI to actually randomly try moving forward and getting the first reward. So I just made the wall solid and disabled the ending of the episode. As I said, the tricky part is really the training setup, and your goal is to help your AI learn by any means necessary. So you start by teaching it the simplest example possible, and then over time you can make the training scenario more difficult. So with this, it's just doing normal reinforcement training. 
So as you can see, even after some time, it still hasn't figured out that the obvious thing is to go forward. So that's just basic reinforcement training. But like I covered in the last video, we can use the awesome power of imitation learning. If you haven't seen it yet, go watch that video. It's really a very powerful tool. For that, I have some demos here that I prepared previously. Essentially, I just went through the track a bunch of times and recorded it. So over here, got 4,000 steps going through eight episodes with a nice mean reward. So I recorded it for the left turn track and the one for the right turn track. Then on the config file, just enable it to use the demos by enabling both Gale and behavioral cloning. And for SARS, I want the agent to learn how to behave exactly like the demos. So I'll leave the strength of both of these close to one. And for the extrinsic rewards, we can now leave it at just 0 0.1. So let's see with imitation learning how much faster it learns. And for the first attempt, for some reason, it still tries going backwards. But afterwards, it does start to learn from the demos. And there you go right away. It instantly learns to go forwards. Now, obviously, it's still getting stuck, so it still hasn't learned. But in just pretty much just a couple of steps, then it already learned quite a lot more than just with reinforcement learning. So as you can see, imitation learning is really very powerful. And in order to enable it, it's really very simple. You just had a bunch of things over here on the config. And there you go. They automatically start using it. So here you can see a handful of them have already managed to go through the first turn, go through there, and these ones managed to go, and look at that one. Okay, so that's what I did. I first used the demo on this track and trained it enough so that they'll learn how to achieve this. So trained it using BC, Gale, and reinforcement learning. Then when it learned this track, I set it to training on this second track. I used a different demo. I lowered the strength on the imitation learning components and increased a bit on the extrinsic rewards. And then when it learned how to go through this track, then I set it to train on all five tracks and just let it go using only reinforcement learning. So here I have a brain that I've trained for about 5 million steps. And right away you can see all of them go. So there they go on this track and they also go successfully on this track. And then down here on the complex track, yep, look at that, they go through that turn. And this complex turn, that one poor thing got stuck, but most of them actually go through. They come into that one and they do a nice turn and there they go. So here you can see just how powerful this is if, for example, you have a game where you want to support custom player tracks. You would just make a handful of pieces, all of them with built-in walls and checkpoints, and you'll let the player create any track shape you want. Then the cars would still be able to race through any track custom made by the player. You would simply include a trained brain model where you would train it for something like 50 million steps, and the agent would perfectly follow any track with any shape. All right, so there you have it. Yet another excellent use case for using machine learning and another example of how easy it is to use ML agents in Unity. Check the full playlist linked in the description where I'm adding all of my machine learning videos. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll see you next time.